you know, most companies somehow say um, our employees are the, the most important asset that we have. When, if not now, you have a chance to prove that. everybody welcome to the america chamber of commerce and the stories of resilience resilience in the ukraine wartime resilience and we're absolutely delighted to have with us today uh, oliver oliver gierlich who is the general manager at uh, bayer oliver it is great to see you how are you doing thank you andy it's nice to have me there thank you very good so uh, only like uh, the week before last, I was uh, at your um, really uh, impressive um, plant in the in, in Jatomir region. This is one of the largest uh, corn seed uh, uh, plants in, in Ukraine, one of the largest in Europe, and really impressive to see what you're doing. So, I mean, tell us, uh, Oliver, in terms of resilience, yes, what, what is resilience for you during, during wartime? Before I start as answering in general, let me give you two examples. And one is exactly the plant. We never stopped working. And the war started in the main season where we are producing and delivering. So farmers needed our corn seeds. And um, our employees on voluntary base, we asked nobody, all voluntaries came to the plant every day with reduced hours in those Time frames where we figured out that there were less attacks because the front line was not so far away. And uh, instead of doing everything one day of picking the material and loading the trucks, they did only loading, uh, picking one day, loading the other day, but they came every day. So that is resilience. And this was a very amazing example for me. Another one that sticks to my mind is we had decided to pay the salaries early in February in case something would happen. And it turned out that just the day that the war broke out, um, we were paying salaries. And we had colleagues sitting at home, partly in these higher towers where they were really a, an easy target, hearing the shooting outside and being at home with their families, taking care of the salary payment so that their colleagues would have the money to, to move away from Kiev and uh, even out of, outside of Ukraine. And only when they finished uh, around noon, they they called and they said, now I'm taking my family and I'm going to the shelter. That is bravery and that is uh, resilience to me. Uh, two examples that really stick to my mind. So what does it mean in general? Um, well, since the very first, first days of the full-scale invasion, um, we had to adapt quickly. So resilience means adapting to a new changing circumstances. And in our case, it meant that we never stopped working and that we provided medicine to the to the people who needed it and, and seeds to the farmers. Um, it means to ensure business continuity and, first of all, safety of our employees. The hard work is resilience for me. And that is what the team enabled us to succeed. So our employees throughout uh, the, the company have proven these high levels of flexibility, responsibility, commitment uh, in working in, in organizing logistics and maintaining the business processes. So that is resilience to me. They did that in the bomb shelters, on the move, in new locations, in different countries, in the west of Ukraine, um, in, despite uh, fuel shortages, uh, power outages. This is resilience, finding a way to get things done. And um, yeah, and then it means, of course, uh, resilience means to live and work with and uh, with high levels of uncertainty, with ambiguity, uh, maintaining the team moral high, the motivation. So for me, particularly, it means being even closer to people than what I'm used to do. Uh, and I am rather a people person. So um, listening very often to their fears and needs and, and finding a, re a rep reply or just some, some moral support and uh, quick and effective decisions in a constantly changing environment. Yeah, I think that's phenomenal. I think it is, you know, the way how, how you motivate the motivation of people during yeah. this time. 
So, I mean, what what oh, we're in the third year of war now, the, fir, fir, the fir, third year of the full scale um, uh, invasion. And so, what, what what has surprised you most over, over these last um, two years? There's quite some things. Um, the first one is, of course, our team. I gave you just two examples right now, which really will accompany for the rest of my career and my life. It, I've never seen something like that. Um, but if I go to some other examples, it's also the uh, the the high level of solidarity and support within the business community. Uh, we are all facing similar challenges now. And uh, we managed to maintain our business processes. Uh, we stick in, in communication with our uh, clients, with our customers. Uh, we didn't have any considerable disruptions here. And that is because of the attitude of our employees. But it is also because we had quite some understanding from our uh, customers who saw that we did all efforts that we could, but um, it was not always 100% possible like in normal times. For example, trucks going out to deliver seats and then coming back because they faced roadblocks or dangerous situations and then they had to deliver a day or two later. Um, the other thing that inspired me and well, surprised me in a way, but especially inspired me, is a level of of uh, international support for Ukraine that came up very, very quickly. Um, I have seen an incredible solidarity um, and support from my buyer colleagues around the world and from the company. Um, we have been able to increase salaries by, by the inflation the first year, which was 30%, as you remember. Uh, there was not even a discussion. Um, an incredible support to help our people uh, to get outside, to find shelter with other buyer colleagues in other European countries, uh, to provide health insurance. Uh, and the company and the employees abroad had an incredible support for that. That was not, not even a discussion. Yeah, that's phenomenal. So I think, you know, looking back, I think, you know, historians are going to be, you know, looking about what, what's happened over the last number of years. And I think, you know, business schools will be also looking, um, you know, how, you know, leaders like yourself have managed to run organizations, to, to run businesses during, during uh, 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 the war. So, I mean, what, what would you say your, your, your key learning is sort of during wartime? Well, it has made me more resilient, that's for sure. And I mentioned before that I'm rather the people leader. I'm I'm not so much in, uh, based on, on numbers purely. Uh, I like to go away from my desk, uh, talk to people, meet with people, understand what motivates them and uh, support them in this. So the importance of empathy and care in leadership is certainly a topic that um, you cannot underestimate. You cannot run such a situation from behind a desk and sending out a, an email with uh, with some orders or, or some indications. Um, it has certainly also shown that we have to to recalibrate uh, life value sometimes. So um, uh, the significance of human connection, uh, the impact of our actions in time of crisis, don't as underestimate it. I mean, we have taken decisions in in very short periods of time, um, we often have jumped any any reporting line that I would have to my headquarter. I have just taken a decision because I saw it as necessary, and uh, and that was fully fully supported. And so the the importance of quick, decisive actions is certainly something that that gets a different meaning here. Um, and then. Another very important thing is, is this walk, walk the talk. Uh, you know, most companies somehow say um, our employees are the, the most important asset that we have. When, if not now, you have a chance to prove that. And what we have mentioned for so many years and what we have done in the, in the environment that we had at the time, we did. But now in the war, it really... Is a hardcore proof, and this is what we did. And uh, so, walk the talk, be consistent in what you're saying, give um, comfort to your people, be clear in the message, um, be very clear that their that their jobs are safe uh, when it is the case, 
um, that they have all the support. And uh, yeah, it took a bit of a while. They were not sure if that was some some announcement, but yeah, then they, they learned it. And this made that the people have this strong connection to the company now. Well, that's so brilliant. Think, well, yeah. yeah, I think these are the key learnings for me. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you, Oliver. Thank you for being here. I mean, you 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 are you are here. You're on the grounds here in Ukraine. So thank you for for being here. I think that that in itself is uh, um, already a great signal to send out. Thank you for everything that, that you're doing. Uh, I think it's so important, especially in the key sectors where where bio is in Ukraine today. So uh, stay safe, stay stay healthy. So thank you, everybody. Uh, Oliver Gierlix from uh, the general manager at uh, Bio. And uh, thank you for your resilience and your inspiration. All the best. Stay safe and see you soon. Thank you very much, Andy. Bye.